So we got the dumbest police officers ever. If you watched the last video, we watched some of the craziest inmates ever escaping from prison. And now, we about to watch the dumbest police officers ever. This one's gonna be funny. Going to the other side. This is definitely gonna be funny. I'm yeah. Seattle Police Department! Open the door! Contact. We're coming in! Open the door now! Seattle Police! We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human and allows us to grow, evolve, and become better. But the cops in today's video made such huge blunders that they deserve to wear the title of dumbest police officer ever. Hands up. Do not release the dog with his hands up. Do not release the dog with his hands up, dog. Do, do not, do not, do not, do not, get the dog off of it. Get the dog off of it. Get the dog. Members of law enforcement have authority over. <sighs> Already, that's a lawsuit, man. Give yes. me that money. Give me that, that money. money right there. Give me that money. <laughs> Release the dog on me. Let the dog bite me. Make that yeah. mistake for me. I, I know that one bad. That's crazy. That's a milli. I'm just kidding. That's at least a milli. I don't want my legs tore up like that. Exactly. I don't want my legs tore up. Definitely yeah. painful. Dog. Yeah. Rip me yeah. apart. Yeah. I'm good. That's a lawsuit. That's crazy though. For our well-being, our freedom, and even our lives. So when they make a dumb mistake, there should be hell to pay. There should always be repercussions for our mistakes. Otherwise, we'll never learn. However, reality is never that simple. Sometimes, cops do really stupid things, and they get away with it. Will that be the case in today's lineup of dumbest cops? Let's find out. This is Samuel Scott Jr., a black man who had the audacity to call the cops once his car got stolen. And what did the cops do? They figured he was the suspect, so they arrested him. But let's take a step back and start from the beginning. On November 13th, 2018, Samuel Scott Jr. was visiting his aunt. Once he left her house at around 5.40 p.m., he noticed his 2006 Jeep Compass was missing, so he called police to report it being stolen. Several police vehicles converge at the scene, and Scott is immediately detained and handcuffed. Do you have anything back for me? Uh -huh. Put your hands behind your back for me. 4323. 4323. Good time right now. I'm going to express here in a minute. 4223. What do they think that he... If they think that he's trying to fool them, like calling I think that's what it has to be, yeah. They just think, oh, he's trying to get one up on us. Yeah. Why would they arrest him? Mm -hmm. well, he's the one who called. Just straight off the bat. <clears throat> you have a report for me? When you get it? No, I got him. I got him on my car. Make sure you complete that report because I need that. Okay. 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 Where's your ID? Right there. You're gonna take all your stuff. We can't take this. Or this. Where's, um, you know, like, what about my kids? I mean, I, 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 I literally, I went over there to see my kids and everything. My kids are. Where are your kids? I was with them. <laughs> Where are they? They were over there. What's the name? They were at my cousin's house. So, Why? huh? Why? What? I've been over there since. What? I want to say it's five. What? Five thirty, six o'clock. I, I actually okay. walked back over here. You have two IDs? Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Well, one is an ID and one is a driver's license. Okay. All right. Are you going to take this for kids or something, or am I going to? Uh, uh -huh. okay. Get the story put together. I'll let you know what's up, okay? All right, bud. Hats off to Mr. Scott for taking all this so lightly. His kids could have seen their dad through the window, and it could have traumatized them for life. He explains that he left them at his cousin's house and then walked back here. But wait, there has to be something else, right? Because this just doesn't make sense. Here's the backstory. Officer Jonathan Guzman, the one who you watch put Mr. Scott in handcuffs, actually saw his car going 20 miles per hour over the limit. So, he followed it. He witnessed the driver crashing into another vehicle and then fleeing the scene. 
He didn't see the driver's face, but described him as a six foot two, heavy set black male wearing a white tank top and fleeing the scene. And that really resembles Mr. Scott, right? Who had a white undershirt, not a tank top, beneath the t-shirt. When the officers explained to Mr. Scott he looks like the suspect, he has a clever response. I live recently logged off of a VPN at my job. Okay, I want to talk. Roughly before I came over here, before I called you guys. But I'm telling you, you guys got the wrong guy. Okay. The description of the car, of the guy that took off in your car is just like yours. But that's half Miami, bald headed with a beard. Uh, even if he had dreads, his dreads with a beard. Okay. But then that's, it's not fair. I mean, like like I said, my kids, I called because my car got stolen and my kids are over there. They don't even know what's so going on. So what time was your car stolen? I told you, probably around about five. I didn't pay attention to the time. I really just jumped out of the car to go see. That's it. If you want, like I said, we can go. Like, I had my kids and stuff like that. Dropped them off. Came over to, to say hi. And I went, I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't. I mean, like I said, I know the people that stay across there, over here, all over the place. I don't know what happened. We often come upon situations where police officers just fail to recognize and acknowledge signs and information. Mr. Scott's story sounds perfectly reasonable and plausible. It's more than likely that another man who resembles Mr. Scott in stature could have stolen his car. So why wasn't any of this taken into account? Instead, not only do they detain Mr. Scott, but also decide to arrest him. My car just somebody jumped in, drove off. And I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't do it. I mean, literally, I, I mean, why would I call the police? <laughs> I mean, I called because my car is stolen. I mean, I, how me and my kids are going to get home? My pillow, my, my work ID, my work stuff, all of that stuff is in there. Why would I? That's why I'm like, what? what's, why am I in handcuffs? If I'm calling them and, and, and I'm. Uh, just give me a second, OK? Right. I'm open the window so he's going to Again, the cops fail to acknowledge that any of this could be true. For that reason, these cops are some of the dumbest cops ever. Or if they're not dumb, they're just evil. Listen to what this cop says when Mr. Scott tries to explain that he's a decent human being. Also, uh, I don't really know, or I remember, I've never been arrested. Hell, one of, one, of my, one of my, one of my, one of my good friends of mine is, like, city of Miami, Dennis Jackson. He's been my pastor, my unto retired city of Miami police officer. You never been arrested before? No. You sure about that? Yeah. What? Are you sure about that? Do you need any more proof that this was a prejudice-induced arrest? It's like this dumb cop cannot wrap his head around the fact that this man has not been to jail before. It's ludicrous. Soon after, Mr. Scott was arrested and charged with leaving the scene of the accident, false reporting of a crime, failure to carry a concealed weapon license, and possession of marijuana. All the charges were later dropped, but Mr. Scott took matters into his own hands and filed a lawsuit against the city of Miami and the five dumb cops who were involved in his arrest. His lawyers asking for $500,000 in damages. If this was California, the sum would be tripled. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, check out our video entitled When a Suspect Sues Cops and Actually Wins. Not all dumb cops harm innocent civilians. Some do it to themselves, like these TikTok star wannabes. This Orange County Sheriff's deputy has been punished for a video she posted on TikTok. Yet, despite the punishment, she continues to create new videos while wearing her uniform. The punishment came down when her supervisor apparently saw her streaming on TikTok Live while on duty. She was reprimanded, but footage from her TikTok account surfaced and she came under investigation. Her colleagues felt the videos were inappropriate and embarrassing. The officer, named Shelby Abramson, was suspended from her job for disobeying her superiors and unbecoming conduct. She claims the suspension came because of the explicit lyrics in one of the videos. Abramson has been creating TikTok videos of herself in uniform since shortly after she was hired by the agency less than two years ago. Those TikTok videos have earned her 80,000 followers. According to this internal report, although most of the videos Deputy Abramson posted were benign, some of the audio tracks contained foul language and sexually explicit lyrics.
However, it seems she didn't learn her lesson. Or did she? Orange County Sheriff's Office does not allow employees to engage in social media activity that could negatively affect the public perception of the agency and directs employees to refrain from posting agency logos, uniforms, or similar identifying items on personal social media pages. Even so, she continued making videos, although as she claims off-duty. This is what she had to say about her suspension. Okay, so I just kind of want to address that comment right there because that's not the first one that I've recently seen um, going around. So here we go. Okay, so regarding that, yes, I did get in trouble. Yes, I got suspended, but it was not for doing them on duty. Most of my videos were not done on duty whatsoever. And if it was done in a school, it was done either prior to kids getting there or after kids has already left the campus where I still need to actually be present on campus. My investigation and the reason why I got in trouble was because of the song choice that I did for um, that one video, nothing else. So maybe she did learn her lesson, maybe not. Some people feel that this behavior is degrading to police officers, but she claimed that she only wanted to show that cops are also human beings and not just bad guys behind a gun. I don't know about you, but I'd rather meet a bubbly, smiling officer in the street than a rugged type with a bad temper and itchy fingers. What about you? Do you agree? Similar to Deputy Adams, another female officer took... I agree. I was about to say, um, hmm. I'm an influencer myself, so I don't know how I feel about this one. Mm -hmm. Like, is that, see, just go make some videos, like, I don't really care. But I want a cop that is more nice down to earth, a regular human being too. Mm -hmm. you, you already know that, you already know that they have the power because they're in a police uniform. They have the badge or whatever. So when you see that they have a little personality, a uh, sense of humor, um, I mean, you need to know the cops. Now. Uh, that they're cops so they have the power yeah but you know that they come with a little bit of authority because they're that's their job yeah. but um yeah i would rather see one with a little sense of humor um some personality whatever if the person that does tiktok doesn't get the job done then get out get her out of here definitely you know, get her out of here as long as she's getting her job done it doesn't bother me yeah as long as she's getting her job done all right to TikTok, but her public announcement caused an uproar, and rightfully so. This is Federal Way Police Department Officer Brianna Strauss, and she decided to make a smug public service announcement to all the drivers out there. Take a look at this. PSA to everyone out there. I'm speaking for myself, but I'm probably speaking for a large majority of other officers out there. If we're driving on the freeway in our police car, get the f out of the way. Get the f out of the way. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. Best way to find that out is get the f out of the way. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. You can't do that. So get the f out of the way. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. So you might as well get the f out of the way. Super simple. That's all. You're welcome. Jeez. Can she be more cringy? First of all, her entire demeanor. <laughs> she be uh, more cringy. My guy hit the was funny, man. That was a good ass question. She said, "Jeez, for real?" Cause what are you talking about, lady? She, she literally took the power trip to social media. That's exactly what he just talked about. Yes, the power trip. They took that to social media. Come on now, like we're all adults here. is pompous and authoritative. She acts like she's better than everyone else and has more rights than everyone else just because she has a badge and drives a cop car. That's the top reason people don't like cops and she's blatantly rubbing it in our faces. What was the point of this public service announcement? And to make it even worse, she got suspended for only one shift. On the other hand, Deputy Abramson got suspended for three weeks on account of her bubbly dancing. Which one do you think was worse? Speaking of bubbly girls, that's crazy. That's crazy. Big L for the police department. Yeah. Um, man, when it comes down to what they were doing, it's really more just, I don't know. I guess none of them were doing anything wrong. It's more about how you feel. She did have a power trip and said like, oh man, get out of the way. 
We'll find a reason to put you over. She was just being truthful, but that part was it was kind of messed up. You, you can't just find a reason to pull somebody over if they're innocent. <clears throat> but get out of the way, we can drive 90 miles per hour, I guess. But the TikTok one, that was ego too at the same time. They're just mad that she's dancing. Probably mad that she has 80K. Probably mad that she has 40K building up and dancing in the uniform. Because they don't do it. Yeah. So none of them really deserve punishment. I'm not saying, I'm not even going to say, oh, she deserved 30 days too. Or they ain't do nothing wrong, really. I guess the one day isn't bad. In terms of like, I think one day is fine, one day each. Yeah. In terms of attitude, of course, I was, the other lady, man, I, would, I, just, I don't like the attitude. Yeah, I don't like that. But yeah. But honestly, all that matters is that they do their job. I don't really, at the end of the day, it really matters if they do their job. So, if everyone does their job the best, that's what I want helping you. Yeah, we're not going to pick and choose what they say. Yeah. But it depends on how to do the job. If they do the job, then it's all good. If they're not, then you can look at that and be like, hmm. Can you even say this? Can you even, do you deserve to dance? Do you deserve to say this? Yeah. So, we got to get some more training in there. Yeah, buddy. I love dogs, and I'm of the firm belief that there are no bad dogs, just bad owners. In the case of Jadarius Rose, a dumb canine operator released the dog on the defenseless man, even though he was ordered not to do so. Rose was a truck driver. Even though he was 23 years old at the time, he looked like a kid, and in that situation, he acted like a kid. The incident started when a police officer decided to pull him over for a missing mud flap. Rose stopped at first, but then kept going, so the cop called for backup and engaged in pursuit. This is the moment he pulled over, but seeing the guns aimed at him, he continued driving. Notice the gun this officer's aiming with. Damn! That's crazy. Is that an AK? That's an M6? Since when did we pull people over and pull out an AK on the app? He's aiming, elbow on the car, red dot sight, ready to go. I would have pulled off too. <laughs> ready to no, go. If I turned around and there's a police officer aiming an AK at me, that's crazy. I'm out of there. I'm out of there. I don't blame you, my G. Oh my goodness. Alright, you just pull back down. Okay, are you switching over to Quick County or Ross County? He took off again. Uh, we're heading northbound, 23. 1959 Jackson, I'll have driver. We're northbound, right lane. He rolled the window down, looked at us, rolled it back up. Now it wasn't a high-speed pursuit by any stretch of the imagination. Thing is, this kid had done nothing wrong. It's just that when he pulled over and saw all the guns pointed at him, he got scared. He then actually called his mother and asked her what to do. She told him if he'd done nothing wrong, he should stop. But then he rolled down the windows and saw the guns again and did not feel safe at all. So instead of getting out, he continued driving and called 911, hoping they could help him. In case you think that's crazy, listen to this. A 911 call that his attorney indicated was Rose seems to confirm that he was afraid. I parked the truck and um, I was about to comply with them, but they all uh, had their guns drawn out for whatever reason. Um, it seemed like they're trying to kill me. You need to comply with them. I mean, what was he expecting to hear from the operator? This just goes to show how inexperienced and really afraid he was. As the operator instructed him to obey the officers, Rose eventually did, but little did he know what was in store for him. Notice there's a bunch of law enforcement vehicles, including Ohio State Highway Patrol and the Sheriff's Office. And that's when this happened. That's a dog! Come to me! You know 
one bit. Do not, do not, do not let them, re don't release the dog, do not release the dog with his hands up, do not release the dog with his hands up, do not release the dog with his hands up, do not, do not, do not, do not, get the dog off of it, get the dog off of it, get the dog off of it. As you can imagine, horrific wails ensue from the young driver, pleading for the officers to get the dog off of him. However, the dog does what he was trained to do and does not let go that easily. At this point, the dog still does not let go, and you can see the female officer cover her face in disbelief. Even when the dog is finally off, the kid continues screaming, most likely out of shock more than just the pain. And all the officers seem to be taken aback by what just transpired. And this young man's ordeal isn't over yet. I, I say have one of motor units at master, whatever. Yeah. Was that not loud enough? Yo, that is insane. That's crazy. That's wild, man. That would be so hot, man. And that he didn't even do anything at no. all. He didn't do nothing. First they had the color duty pointed at him. Then a the dog. And they sick the dog off him, man. Come That's on, tough. Man. Couldn't even get it off of him. I hope he got a whole the lot of money, man. Lady walking away, can't even look. Mm -hmm. I wanna hear what they, he said though, about them telling something, telling them yeah. to stop. Yeah, man. Said it three, four like more times. <laughs> 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 Touch it, I got handcuffs on. Y'all just making it worthless. And you still ain't hey, on me stop, like you're pinning me we're, down. We're wrapping up. Just Nobody is on you. Yes, you are. Look, you're grabbing my shorts. We're trying to wrap you up. I don't need it wrapped up right now. The bearded man you just saw here was Ryan Speakman, the canine handler who let the dog loose. Just to make it clear, it wasn't like the dog slipped loose. The video clearly shows the young driver kneeling with his hands up when the dog runs the other way. Then his handler yells at him, frantically pointing at the unarmed suspect who seems to be surrendering. This certainly brings up some terrible images from our past. And it's not clear what Speakman was thinking at the time as he failed to comment. He was fired from the Circleville PD because he did not meet the standards and expectations we hold for our police officers. We'll come back to this. Now let's see what Rose and his lawyer have to say after a dimwit journalist. Yeah, I want to hear the whole story, man. Get him out of here, everything. Yeah, for man. Real asked him if the cops firing is enough to make things right like that the, the police released a statement they fired the police officer is that enough for you I just hope we don't have time. I'm sorry uh, Ben if you if you could answer that question yeah Tom I certainly think it doesn't remove the trauma and the physical injuries suffered by Jadarius who was on his knees, putting his hands in the air, which is the universal sign of surrender. What more can a black person do to say that I'm not putting you in fear? It was enough that he had guns pointed at him uh, when he had pulled over and he had an assault weapon pointed at him. He called 911, Tom, saying, I'm afraid they're gonna kill me. 
that is the sentiment of most black people in America when the police pull them over. Jadarius is being represented by Ben Crump, the famous civil rights attorney who's previously represented Randy Cox, a G.K. Owens, and the family of George Floyd. In the interview, Rose said that when the dog was biting him, he was terrified and he thought he was going to die. The pain was real, and he was screaming because he just didn't want to die. He also said that he couldn't even see what the officers were doing because he was so scared of the dog that was ripping into his arm. You want to stand up on your feet? Or you want to sit on your butt? Yeah, I don't know what you're going to let me do. I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to let you either sit or stand. As long as you ain't going to do nothing stupid. I'm going to do some stupid. Just ha hands. have him set up, Tyler. Are you still let, let, him, on, let him set up. It's too late for that. Are you still squeezing me? I know. You I'm still squeezing me? Let it go. Don't put press on me. You have to have press. No. Let, let it be. Just go ahead and let it why are you still touching me? Okay. Why are you still touching me? Because you are under arrest. Yeah, I have handcuffs on. I understand. All right, so you can stop touching me. Tell me what I need to do. Hurt, but I don't need your hand on me. The dog already I'm did enough. Probably wouldn't be bad to put one on. It's understandable that after such a shock, Rose just wants some room to breathe. As for Officer Ryan Speakman, the Ohio Patrolman's Benevolent Association has filed a grievance on behalf of him. As it turns out, the police department conducted an investigation into the incident, and a use of force review board determined that the agency's policy for the use of canines was followed in the apprehension and arrest. Really? I'd like to see the policy that says officers are supposed to unleash dogs on defenseless unarmed suspects. What do you think? Should Speakman's termination be rescinded? Should he be paid and reimbursed for all lost wages, seniority, and benefits lost resulting from his firing, and his employee record and sponged of his termination history? Let me know what you think of that in the comments below. I bet that last... No. Nah. No. <laughs> Big no. Get him out of here. No. No. That's crazy. Clip got your blood rushing. So, since we're all amped up and ready for action, let's follow a couple of officers as they bravely break down the door to an apartment where an intoxicated man was causing a scene and apparently having a mental breakdown while throwing things out of the window. Seattle Police Department! Open the door! We're coming in! Open the door now! Now this looks a little drastic, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, there were several reports. One said that the man was hanging out of the window, while the other said that the suspect was trying to push someone out the window. So it's perhaps justified that these officers would break the door with guns drawn, even without a warrant if they feared for the victim's safety. However, pretty soon they realize that there's no broken window and there's no suspect. I mean, there wasn't even any mess on the street, but they failed to realize that. Meanwhile, the woman in the apartment is taking a bath, so she doesn't even hear the cops shouting until they're already inside the apartment. Right, breathe, breathe, breathe. Moving out. Move. Show me your hands! Hello? Yeah, please, for me. What the f What the f inside? What the f Who else is inside? Who else is in here? No. There's no broken window. The reason why there's no broken window is that the cops did not just miss the apartment. They missed the entire building. The dispatcher said that the incident was at- Hey, yo! Come on, now. How you gonna miss the whole entire building? If I'm just chilling in the crib and then six police officers bust in and then it turns out they missed the entire building? I'm gonna be hot. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna be so mad. I'm suing them too. So, like, a Family Guy episode or something. Like, that's crazy.
If that happened to you, you just chilling, you taking a shower. She was in the bath, taking a shower, like in the shower, and then boom, boom, open up, LAPD. FBI, open up. You gonna be you? Gonna... Thirty twenty eight First Avenue, but these cops decided to go to thirty sixteen First Avenue, which was half a block away from the actual location. But it takes some time until they realize their mistake. They just in there moving around, trying to make it seem like it's a scene, there's yeah. something going on, huh? When they just at the wrong up place. They're like, oh, oh alright, let's see, let's okay. see what's going on. Mm, let's, okay. uh, they're trying to make it seem like we're doing something, like it's something here. important. Nothing late, nothing's happening, but uh, let's move around. Let's search the whole house. They just stuck. Imagine three officers rummaging through your house for no reason. Literally no reason. That's crazy. I think this one is top. That's the top one. That's that's number one right. Number here. one right here. That's the dumbest, dumbest police officers, man. That's insane. Comment down below what you, which one you think is the dumbest. Yeah, we'll talk about that. than never cops are now certain that they're at the wrong place in reality they barged into the apartment of a 45 year old therapist named elizabeth wren instead of apprehending the suspect they were now faced with a sobbing shaking traumatized woman The officers then try to explain themselves, but little good that does. Imagine if someone burst into your house while you were in the shower and held you at gunpoint. It must have been scary, and she must have felt like her rights as well as her privacy were violated. Not to mention she could have been shot by a trigger-happy cop. Now she's standing in the hallway, probably half naked. Someone's being thrown out of a window right now. It's in this building or the other building. It's in the 404. Contacted you. We knocked down the seal police officers. It sounded like you were the victim of the crime, and you sounded like you weren't able to close the door. And that's why we kicked it in. I didn't know who the f was at my door. I know. I'm sorry I didn't about hear that. You say Seattle Police. I didn't hear that at all. I heard open the door, open the door, and I was like, who is this? And I did not hear okay, Seattle okay, Police. Okay, I'm at sorry. All. We got the to answer the door. Okay. <laughs> Please. I'm sorry about that. We thought that you were the victim and you were being held captive inside of this room. Right now, there's someone else about you out of a window. So they're going to go do that. We're going to have a supervisor come over and we'll talk to you through that. I understand it's very, very jarring. I'm so sorry that this happened. Okay. 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 It was incredibly dumb to go into the wrong building, right? But this cop handled the situation quite professionally. He could have just said sorry and stormed out of there and let the supervisor deal with it. But he stuck around, explained the situation in more detail, and tried to calm the woman down. He even apologized multiple times. So that part was handled properly, and considering the circumstances, they were authorized to enter the apartment. Just not that one. Elizabeth Wren is, of course, suing the city of Seattle. The Seattle Police Department is getting sued after breaking down the front door and charging into the wrong apartment. The woman who lived there claims she's still traumatized from that day three years ago. Tonight, King Five spoke with her attorney. And it was all unnecessary. Seattle Police! Wren was getting ready to take a bath when police suddenly entered her apartment. She realized how close she came to losing her own life for no reason. She had a teapot in her hand, a metal teapot. Well, what if she had grabbed a kitchen knife? 
What if she grabbed anything else that the police would have construed as a weapon? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for being here, and keep a lookout for the next hidden file. No, nah, that's one. That one's crazy. Yeah, that's definitely number one dumbest yeah. thing you could do as a cop. Somebody completely not in the situation, you just put them in the middle of the crime scene. That's why, bro. Yeah. Comment, comment down below what you think about these dumb cops, man. Which one was the dumbest to you? Which one was the dumbest? I was gonna say the dog one. At least that was like a higher end situation, maybe. They were chasing somebody, run away, truck. But he was on his hands and knees. And he was this close to them, and they still let the dog go. Yeah. The but dog one, he was, in the act, he was in the action a little bit. They need to have the right address. That's the start. You gotta have the right address. They were in action too, but before everything happened, you don't have the right place. You know, totally down, you're totally down the block from where you're supposed to be. That's dumb as hell. That's dumb. So that's number one for me. Y'all comment which one, which one is the dumbest for you. I thought the dog one was, uh, like at least, I don't know why they pulled him over. I didn't know why they pulled him over. But the flap, the missing mud flap. Oh, okay, okay. That basically no That's, reason to yeah, no missing reason mud to. flap. No reason to pull out an AK either. For real. Or a missing mud flap. That's crazy too. Yeah. Them, the, those two are side, but I think They're the close. last one is, uh, yes. The last one is wild. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you comment down below. And we're on a mission right now. We're trying to get to 5K subscribers. 5K, y'all. So y'all watching this, help us get to 5K. Whatever y'all can do, comment. Just comment. Comment. It's the least you can do. You don't have to, oh, tell all your friends. Send it to all, every single one of your friends. Just leave a comment. Show yeah. us that you support us. Like it. Simple. Comment. Now, if you're new, subscribe. Welcome to the family. We're going to be dropping videos daily. So, welcome. And you can follow us on Instagram, too. 2K Twins. But, uh, thanks for watching. Until next time.